Well hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. I'm Angela Porter, I love to draw, I love to encourage other people to draw and I'm quite happy to share my own personal wisdom on drawing although I know that it may not apply to everybody and some people might disagree with me on that. But so be it. It's Wednesday the 25th of January as I'm recording this. It's the afternoon, I've just had some lunch and I was going to go out for a walk but it's decided to rain. And I don't like getting cold and wet. I get cold, get wet, but not the two together. So, <coughs> excuse me. In my video yesterday, I was creating something to go into this accordion journal. If you want to know how to make one of these from blank greeting cards or paper that you, or card stock that you cut up, card that you cut up, whatever. Um, then there's a link in the description below to the Witchcraft Do You Do instructions for it, which is where I found it. And I've got some pages done. The cloth, you can see, the, the fabric is actually forming the hinges between the cards. And they do fold out like an accordion, like this. So, it's going to be a long-term project because I've got the front and the back of each side to do. So this is what I drew in the yesterday's video. Up here, some parts here were inspired by early Celtic art, down here by Elena James and Zentangle. And I said I didn't know how I was going to add colour to this yesterday. So, on a piece of paper, same paper, I drew another design using um, the same pens and so on. And I tried a diff couple of different media, mediums, mediums? different kinds of colouring things out on here. So let's see if I can remember. I've got ink tents here. There's also some ink tents here and in some of these. This is ink tents, but on top of it, I've added some pit pastel pencil. These are chalk pastel pencils. And I happen to remember I have these. And I've added some chalk on top of the ink tents in places. In others, like here and here, and these little dots down here, oh, actually those were on top of ink tents, these bits here, and I think here, and some of this, I used um, the Pit Artist pencils, and in some, I think it might be is it this bit or this bit, one of these, I used, um, oh, graffitined pencils. And I've actually come to the conclusion that I quite like the, the, the pastel pencils for this. Yeah, I know, which is why the box is out, if you haven't guessed. So to help me with this, I've got some tortillons and paper stumps here. They're new ones. And I'm going to choose my colours. Ooh. <coughs> and have a sneeze, as is customary. So I'm going to go for this sort of very ready brown. I'm going to go for a another brown. I think I'm going to use a yellowy ochre. I'm not going to go for bright yellows. And there's some lovely green greys in here. It's only two shades, but I, I'll be fine. And I'll want the white to add some highlight. And I think that will be it. But I can always get some more out if I feel I need to. Um, there's no way, I don't think I'm going to be able to add colour to all of this in a sensible amount of time. But what I am going to do is pop my, there we are, sorry about the bounce, my autofocus lock on. I didn't do it until I had um, removed the pit, you know, things that were higher up. Oh, don't even go there today. It's one of those days. I, I've had a day already. And no, I'm not going to talk about it, honest. You don't need to hear. So, I'm going to start with adding some of the lighter colour to the places I would love these to look kind of golden. Now, some of these sections I am going to leave pretty much. I'm going, no, I am going to leave them empty because I've decided I want to add gold. And I've got some gold inks and paints here, so I've got options for how I add gold. What I'm doing 
is I'm putting the colour at the ends of these shapes and sections. Got to be careful here, got to trace that one around because I want to leave an area without colour in the middle as a highlight area, kind of. Ooh, this one's going to be interesting because this one hasn't got any beads in it, but it loops around. So I'm going to kind of think about where I'd like most colour to be on this, and I think there will do. Okay. Now I could... I could, and I think I will, put some white in the centre. Now I am using the Pit Artist white. I do have one of the, um, actually I've got quite a few of the General's ones that um, St Angle loves so much. Well, you know, I'm curious, so I have to buy such things from time to time to try them. And the way I look on it. I do that so you don't have to. They're actually really quite nice. They've got um, a more creamy, oily kind of texture to them than these. But the pit range in Faber-Castell are artist quality, so the top, you know, designed for that purpose. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using the tip of this just to blend the colour out and trying to keep it as dark as I can towards the ends and I will mix it with the white so I get smooth colours the nice thing about these is that they are pretty much opaque once they're on the white may not show up too much <laughs> The only thing I don't like is the dustiness you get from them, but you know, it'll be fine. And I need to find a way to fix them, and my head goes to cheap hairspray, so that's what I used to use going back in the day. So that light actually lightens this up really nicely, and it gives that lovely goldeny feel this so I'm going to add gold in these sections around the outside. I will put some white at the top as that to help with the highlight. It doesn't stay white because this um, I think it's a yellow ochre it looks yellow ochre. The um, pit artist pest pit pastel pencils don't come with a name they just come with a number on but they also have a light fast fastness which means that in if you hang it in daylight it tells you how likely the colour is to fail in you know, it fail to fade. Um two is yeah you know, it's okay but the more stars the better. Not sure what the highest ones are. But a lot of um media will fade if you hang them in direct sunlight, watercolours especially. They do have light fast ratings but it's best not to hang them in direct sunlight, in my humble opinion. Even behind UV glass it's still not enough protection, especially if it's something that's very treasured. So, uh, put this so, yeah, I've had a bit of a day already today between one thing and another. I did ink in one of the designs that I'd sent off as possible covers for the new book. I had some feedback, so I paid attention to that feedback and just wanted to get one inked in um, with the hope of going out walking for a while today, but say it's seems well actually the sun's come out now but blimey those clouds are quite grey over there and there's still kind of fog lingering so it's strange weather it's it's really cool and damp and it's the dampness that makes it feel really cold I think 
So that looks, that's already looking like a lot more interesting. I'm going to move on to these sections because I really want to start to bring out some dimension. Now with these, I'm going to alternate the colours I use. So I'm going to do every other one here with this darker, lovely, rich red brown. So I'm just putting colour at each end of these. Coming up towards the middle, but I'm leaving the middle fairly blank. I will put some white in the centre just to make sure that I get some light, ooh, wrong one, lightness in there. But we'll see what happens. And I'm going to use the same tortillon because really, I don't mind a bit of this yellow appearing, to be honest. This is the equivalent, I suppose, of using graphite pencil for shading. It's just with colour and I prefer to have the colour, even though I'm using pretty limited colours here, because it's, it just feels right. Whereas, I don't know, I've said this before and I'll just say it again, no doubt. It's graphite always looks a bit dirty to me, a bit grimy. I don't mind a bit of grime and grunge. But there is a limit even here to me. So I can strengthen the highlights if I wish just by adding some more white. And I think I will. So I think we could do with that there. The reason for using the, the, um, this tortillon paper stump, um, whatever you want to call it, blending tool, is it both blends the colours but it also works the chalk into the fibres of the paper into the tooth of the paper so it's less likely to smudge and be moved I say less likely you still have to be careful so I want to think of a way of preserving this from touch and so on and, and you know even opening pages in the book and I'm quite tempted to put a layer of vellum that goes over this so you'll see through the vellum a little bit and you'll be able to lift the vellum up to have a good look. And I may do that sort of like front and back. So um, I'll see how it goes. Or if I'm going to fix this with the back, because this remember, this is like a, a mini card. If I'm going to stick the, the back into the book, then I can actually put the vellum underneath. Vellum's a tricky thing to actually add um, glue of any kind to. Really is. Okay, so... That was the darkest colour. This is the medium shade that I've chosen. So it's a much more orangey brown, which pleases me oddly. Go back to the white as well. I quite like adding colour in this way. It, um, I can do all the sections in the colour, well, you know, within a little section, all in one go, and it's, it's less of a fuss and fiddle. The alcohol markers, which I do love, you can only really do one section at a time, otherwise the, the alcohol ink dries and it becomes more difficult to blend, even on marker paper, which is designed to keep, to stay wetter a bit longer. But... Uh, but if you know me, my favourite way of adding colour is digitally. I'm going to use some of this colour just to add it into that darker area, just to tie the two together that little bit. And these do need that extra bit of a highlight just to... just to pick them up so that beginning to bring that kind of really quite intense shape into the oh not shape shade shadow highlight which is really quite nice i like that okay so i'm going to come over here and this bit here i'm going to put the darker color 
in the bit that surrounds this sensual part here. So I will respond to people's comments. If I, you know, by the time you watch this, I must probably have responded to them. Like I said yesterday, I'm trying to get back into the swing of social media and YouTube and videos and everything else. And it's proving to be quite difficult. Life is being awkward at the moment. Nothing, you know, more to do with emotions and various other things that are going on with me here. I'm okay, you know, I, I am okay, honestly, but um, it just seems that it's one thing after another at the moment, but all will be fine and well in the grand scheme of things, everything will be fine, everything will work out. It always does. I love how these become so, the, the smoothness of the gradients you can get with these. And part of me is going, oh, Angela, could you abandon alcohol markers for this? And the, answer, the honest answer is, yes, I really could. I seriously, seriously could. The more I'm using these today, the more I'm going, I really like these. And of course, um, you can get them open stock. Oh, what am I doing here? I'm going to blend three colours together here. So I've got the lightest colour at the end here, going into that lovely orangey colour, which will go into that lovely red. I've seen pan pastels going back. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but these are sort of like, they look like, um, you know, like um, face powder, you know, cosmetic powder you put on your face almost. They come in that kind of shape, solid hard pans, and you use little brushes or little sponges and things to pick the pastel up and apply it. Almost like you're using a palette knife or a, you know, a, a stiff brush of some kind. And I think, yeah, they, they could be interesting, but I'm thinking, I actually really like these. <laughs> um, this section here, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that yet. These, I think I'm going to fill these ones in in gold, to be honest. Possibly gold, I'm not too sure. I haven't used any of that green yet, have I? That is surprising me just a little bit. Because I'd have thought I would have wanted to use it, but obviously not. got that okay I've got this in here I want to do this the same as the other I think these are the ones that I'm going to add the grey green to these outside bits because they really are very much um, like leaves And as I've used colours here, I'm going to use the same way of adding colour to this section, I think, because that will tie those together nicely. In fact, let's focus on doing these and tell you what I do need to do. I do need to get some scrap paper eventually to put under my hands so I'm not putting my fingers in these and running the risk of smudging them, even, you know, if I found a way not to smudge them. They should be okay because I am 
working them into the paper. So I'm, I am feeling a tad out of sorts today. To so say there's things going on, nothing to worry about. I keep saying this, there's nothing to worry about. There's just things going on that I'm trying to make sense of and make adjustments to and come to terms with. And I'm finding it quite troublesome at the moment. It seems to be have been going on for a while and I always expect the past to repeat itself. Which it often does and I don't want it to <laughs> this time. Well I never did in the first place but you know I really don't, and but I see the signs that it's going to do the same thing again. But I may be proven wrong. We'll see. In the meantime, try and lose myself in art and try not to comfort eat. Uh, yeah, that was a, that's just been an issue. That actually works quite nicely because it's almost like it's, it sort of like disappears somewhere and around. Like, I can live with that. This is nice. So being able to do this is actually good for me because it's something I enjoy doing, oddly. For me to say I'm enjoying adding colour is an odd thing. Um, it's my least favourite part, I think, of doing art. Perhaps because I haven't quite found a medium I really like to work with. or mediums. Yeah. There are some I would love to be able to use and I just don't, they just don't seem to want to work for me or me work with them or like watercolours for example. I toyed with the idea of having a go with gouache but um, I suspect that won't work very well. <laughs> I really don't like oil paints. They're very, or, or acrylic paints. I've used them in the past. You know, I've had to try them to find out I don't like them. They're sort of slimy and great for, you know, for gradients and creating, you know, really high contrast quite easily. But just not an angular thing, really. much prefer dry media, even though I would desperately love to be able to do well with watercolours, I just don't think I do. I'm always disappointed with what I produce, other people see it differently. But art is, what I'm trying to say here is art about, is about what you, th you, you personally think about your art. It's not about a claim from other people. Excuse me. I'm just going to blow that away because there's a lot of stuff there. That actually works quite nicely. It's beginning to look quite quite nice, even if I say so myself. Okay, we're going to add the ochre here. I'm putting the the colour in the points, and I'm going to have the highlights in the middle of the sides ish. It's not quite in the middle. It's neither here nor there. Nobody's going to come and measure it along, are they? The only thing I don't like about this is that these chalks will go over the black line and they sort of um, 
lighten the black line somewhat but that is what it is it's part and parcel of using this medium and you either sort of embrace it and allow it to be um, knowing that if you're good with digital wizardry you can always bring that black color back you know or spend ages trying to redraw the lines without making a mess of them as I do make a mess of them I mean so I think it's just acceptance that the lines might become a little less bold but I also think perhaps that helps them to assimilate into the design I do think that art is it's mainly a process that the artist enjoys themselves it's about the artist's expression of themselves how we want to what we want to share with the world and say about what's going on inside us or what we find interesting and fascinating and if other people like it brilliant you know, if, make, if my art makes you smile, yay, I've done a good job, <laughs> you know. And, um, you know, other, other artists make art that make people think because it's about what they're thinking about, perhaps, or what they want to challenge people on. Others have got very overt messages, some not so overt, you know, a bit more hidden, perhaps, in their way. And uh, perhaps no messages in my art, I don't know. Because I've often said I just want to create things that are pretty, really. But, because the world has become a little bit ugly. I say not the world in its entirety. More like areas, areas of the world, societies or countries, or parts of countries have become quite ugly. I think a little bit of beauty to remind people what is what is possible in some ways, you know, I think is important, but that's just me. And by doing these videos and helping and encouraging you to take some time out of your day to be creative to give a go or to pick things up learn things or I say learn things have ideas of what you can do and try and different media different patterns and motifs and sources of inspiration then I guess I'm helping to bring some creativity and enjoyment and beauty into your own lives whatever that means This is beginning to come to life, isn't it? It is. Okay. Do you want to do the... I think I want to do these in this lovely green. If I come back to this. These are the colours I'm looking at here. And I think those would look really quite nice here. I think they're those. Is it? And that one's the darker, darker, darker green. I wanted the, the slightly different green. This is the darker grey green, but I think I want oh, this one here that's very much an olivey green. Have a look with these two side by side. Nope, don't want that one. Let's go for that one. Yeah, that'll do. That one. Or should I go for this one? This is a lovely. Nope, don't want that one either. Thought that one might work. What about this one? See, this one here is just a something I'm working with or working on. Let's see, actually, those two will work nicely. I like those better. There we go. So yeah. So, um, so this is the darker green, so I'm going to make sure I put this one where I want the shadows more than anything. 
So I'm going to have shadows in a lot of places around this section, so around the edges, because I want to make this feel that it's you know, got a nice kind of curve to it going up and over. That's what I'd like. Whether I manage to achieve that is a different matter, but we will see. We may be able to. So I'm putting some of this dark colour around the edge, edges of this section, and a lot more where I think it would be really in shadow here. Perhaps a little bit more there. And perhaps a little bit more down here. Okay, so I've got this one, which is the, the grey or green. So this is where I'm going to blend these two colours together. But I'm also going to put some highlights in, in places to help to lift this as well. Now I don't even know if I'm using these in the approved way, these pastel pencils. And I sometimes think that there are many ways to achieve a similar end or to achieve the appearance of the colours, the art, the textures, the way that you would like it to be apparent, not just one way. This is how I'm doing it. I'm not an expert with these. I have to say, thinking back, I've got some chalk pastel drawings and um, some chalk, you know, sort of like blackboard chalk, as it used to be, chalkboard chalk, and charcoal drawings framed, because I actually really enjoyed them because of this ability to blend them and to create these lovely gradual changes as well as sharp highlights. They were always something that I enjoyed doing. I didn't like the mess I got into, and I certainly didn't appreciate my cat. It was pure white. Love him jumping up and rolling around in the chalk pastels. I ended up with a rainbow cat. It was really funny actually to see him trying to clean himself off because the chalk would have, you know, been dry on his tongue and tasted weird. I tried to catch him and brush him, brush it out. But, you know, there would have been small traces. He was a bit of a swine for doing that. But rainbow cat. It was his way of saying, Oi! Oi! You've been doing that long enough. Can't you show me some attention now? Right, got to blow the dust off. There we go. So hopefully that gives, that actually does work with the highlight. There's a bit here that hasn't got much colour in. And of course I can go back and just add some more white. Where I'd like it is the highlight and then I can work that back in. To lighten that, and I'm going to go right up towards the end, like this. And then I'm just going to work over that white. Yes, I'm using the same tortillon, because I'm not looking for pure white. I'm looking for white that's blended with this lovely green, with these lovely greens. I just want to get that highlight there. And again, just blow the dust away. I'm glad I chose those greens. You know, I am glad that I did. Now I've got here. Wasn't sure. And part of me is going, Angela, what were you thinking? Because that's always going to happen when it comes to colour. But I'm glad I chose a colour that would kind of contrast with this. In fact, I'm going to use some of these greens around this kind of leafy shape here, I think. But I wish I'd done the inside in. These lovely greens though. But I didn't and, you know, it is what it is now. And it will all be fine.
Okay. Let's get to blending this out. I want the dark. I can blend it out. I've missed some of the spaces right up close to the pen line, but you can use the tortillon or the paper stump, whatever you're using. I've got one of these spongy tools somewhere. It's got these little spongy covers for it, which is for pan pastels and even distress inks and things, I think. But you have to look at getting some of those because I think you can get really tiny ones. And you can, I think you can wash them once they get a bit too clogged with stuff and reuse them. All right, that was a lot of chalk. But let's have a look. So I'm going to have to add some more white here because this isn't as white as the other one, but this will blend in nicely. Again, just blowing that off. That actually has worked. I'm so happy with those. I am going to put the green around this, to be honest, because I think it will work really nicely next to this. And I will put white right at the end. Blow it off. That looks actually that's looking really nice. Now then, I'm not sure what to do with these here. You know what I'm going to do with this one now. Going to have some of these in. Some white. Let's highlight. Like so. <laughs> so creating art is my kind of solace. And if I'm unable to create art, I know there's something really not good with me. Um, it was, I could have done with being able to art when I injured my muscle, for example, but there was no way that was going to happen. I just couldn't sit to draw or find a position where I was comfortable to draw. It took um, many weeks and I'm still not 100% right now. A lot better than I was. I, I do get stiffness in the ligaments and tendons, I think it must be. So there was a bit more damage than just muscular, but nothing that limited my movement or whatever. But I do get stiff and sore from time to time. And, um... <sighs> there we go. I might need a bit more white here. Let's give that a little buff in. That'll be nice. And then for that middle one, I'm going to use the lighter green instead of the darker green as the shadowed bit. I'm going to put plenty of white in the middle because I think that would actually... I want a really brighter highlight there, really. That actually works quite nicely. I like that. It's almost like the green is beginning to spread out. I think these might actually look really good in those greens. So I'll do one. So I'm going to start at the base. But I say one, I might as well do them all. So I'll do them all in the same way. So I'm going to start at the, the base of them, the tip of them, with the darkest colour. Then the medium colour. I'm going to take that right up into those other corners. I am going to leave some space around the top for the white. Because I do want a 
highlight here. And I just think this will. It's a pattern of colour. I'm not looking for realistic shadows and highlights. These will just form part of the design, really. But we'll see what it looks like. So I'm just going to try to start with the white and blend the white into the paper and then slowly move down into the lighter colour. Try and get a nice smooth blend there. And down here. And then I'm going to do the same. And uh, blow all of that dust away. Have a look and see whether I, there's any more that needs to come can tell when it's well rubbed in because you don't get any more blending going on. So it's a good sign that this might not move if you brush it. Yeah, perhaps not the best choice of colour, but it'll, it'll do. I've got one here that I want to. I'm just going to add the darker green and some white. It's probably not enough white, but we'll see. That one there. Then I've got this bit here, you see underneath here, and I think I may use this dark brown for this. I just think that will work quite nicely. So I need the other thingy just to blend this through. And it's done that. And I want to put the golden colour around here. Again, it's being consistent, even if you think, mm, perhaps not. I'm determined to stick to these colours. I'm not sure about the green now, but I made that decision and I'm just going to keep on going with it. Yeah, I'm just going to put some of that yellow in, but I'm going to use an awful lot of white because it's the white I want here more than the yellow, I think, but the yellow will add that little bit of shading in there. Okay, so I've got this big section here and common sense tells me we're going green because it would make sense given these other green areas around it. My only problem I'm going to have with these pastels is if I want to add any pattern on the top of these. Because I've got some big areas here that are quite bland of design or pattern. But then part of, part of me knows that nothing... You know, you don't have to put pattern into everything. I'm trying, trying so hard to leave blank spaces, white spaces in my designs. I'm failing. I get carried away. They say nature abhors a vacuum. Well, Angela abhors white space, it seems, or empty space in a design. But it... I can understand where it's useful. I can see that it can be useful to give your eyes a rest as far as the design's concerned. And um, but getting me to leave that blank space is a different story entirely. Like if I try to draw landscapes from observation, which I have been known to try, 
I get to a point where it's most probably good. But then I try to put in everything I can see, the leaves, the textures, every little thing, and it all ends up just looking like froth. So learning how to... Um, this little corner up here learning what to put in and what to leave out is a lesson I'm still struggling with when it comes to in some kinds of observational drawings I think I get challenged with landscapes because I see oh you know I don't see the leaves literally because they're far enough away but my brain goes there's leaves there draw it like leaves <sighs> And that really, really is not very helpful of my brain. But if I can start with the set, you know, the mindset of I'm looking for shapes, I'm looking for things I can use to fill in with pattern, then I get a whole different kind of feeling of things happening. So that's actually looking not too shabby. What do you think? I think what I'm going to do is I've got this gold ink that I used elsewhere. So that's what I am shaky, shaky, shaking up at the moment. And I have got, I've got one paintbrush there. I'm bound to have another one. I'll need a smaller one as well. So I've got a big one for the big sections and a small one for the small ones. This is Spectrum Noir um, Aquatint ink in gold. And it works quite nicely for this. It is water soluble, so, you know, once I've put this down, I'm not going to be adding anything to it. It's sparkly enough that it, you know, satisfies the sparkly part of my mind. And I know if I leave this dry on my brushes, which is likely to happen because I didn't think to get a jar of water to clean them off on then this will clean out of my brushes, whereas um, acrylic ink won't. So that's one. So let's have a look here. The thing is about this as well is once it's dry, I should be able to. I'll do that on here somewhere. Let's do some on the back. So I'll just put some of that gold ink down. Show you what I mean. Once it's dry, I should be able to add shading with the, um, move that over there as well, so you don't always get my hand in the way. I should be able to add shading to these golden sections with pastel pencils. I say should, absolutely no guarantee I'm going to be able to, but I can at least consider it. So I've got that one there to try. I also think I might want to put gold in the middle of these so this is going to be challenging for me. So my skills with brushes aren't exactly legendary. Well they might be legendary not too good. But I just think that this would be really quite nice. Got lots of little ones to add gold to as well. I mean, this might be a bit ambitious adding these now rather than waiting until everything else has been done in pastel. But I can, where I go over the black lines with this, I will go back with a pen and bring the black back, as it were. This is where this. Um, mixed media paper comes into its own in many ways because of its ability to work with so many different mediums. So you can see how shiny this is. If I pick it up and move it around. There, really shiny. Very nice. Okay, so I need some. I've got a fine, fine brush here. Let's pop that there so hopefully it won't get in my way or run away. Let's have a look at doing these little ones. Nice thing about having a fine brush and small 
dots as you as long as you pick up enough of the ink you can actually put a blob of the ink down and just ease it into the shape you want and even if there's a quite hefty blob there it will dry flat very shiny but flat so that's what I'm going to do here is just add these again if I'm miss and go over the black lines I can go back with a black pen once it's dried so I'm not going to stress about such things but I would never use this tiny brush to try to fill in the bigger spaces I have to say so something I've learnt over, over time is that I'm not going to stress about these black lines as such Okay, so that's looking quite good. I've got some down here to do. And some over here. I'm going to put some right in the centre there. Some there. Here. There. Just pick some more up and I can't see anywhere else. The only other place I might want to pop them is in these dots in my seeds here. I was thinking about white ink. But I just think gold would tie in so much more with elsewhere. I think it might be worthwhile just adding these. Now some of these um, seeds are so small, I'm not going to even try to put a dot there. go I think that's everything let me just pop that on just checking for oh I've really made a big mess over here this one's really spilled out those black lines you can see it when it picks the light up but that's not a problem as I keep saying is that I can go back and sort that out at a later time I'm just going to put those brushes out my way and the ink the, the, the ink will wash out because it is water soluble. But this one is nice and dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this gold brownie colour. What you may see hopefully is that I can blend it in on the card but it will also blend over that gold and it does gives a very subtle difference in the colour. It's very subtle. Let's try the darker one. Just over the gold. And let's see how the darker one does. Okay, that's better. And see how it tones it. That little bit. Not sure if I'll do that, I may very well. But at the moment, everything is just drying here. Well, oops, as I go and put my fingers on things that may not be dry. <laughs> you can see. And it may be that perhaps I can just use what's on my sortie on here just to perhaps give that little hint of something darker there. Maybe that perhaps if I scribble on here, oh gosh, on here. Pick some up. That's better. And that way I can add some shade to my gold and tone it down just that little bit. I don't know if you can see. 
subtlety. I will, honestly, I am going to go over my black lines. It's quite subtle, but it is there. More so than when it's you've got light directly reflecting off it. So that actually works quite nicely. I'm quite chuffed with that. Just leaving that area in the middle just exposed. You can see on this one. Get the shine. So I'm quite happy with that. And that gold is really, you know, it goes back to the Iron Age and, and so on as well. So I haven't finished this, but I think you get the idea of what I'm doing. So I am going to put this to one side for the rest of the day. So you can leave me a comment to see if you'd like to watch me complete adding colour to the rest and to see what happens. And um, the only thing I'm not happy is I really should have thought about green. I think perhaps I should have just done it all in rusts and browns, but I'm quite happy in some ways because it's all an, always an experiment and you'd think I'd learn by now to stick to fairly monochrome colour schemes. You'd think, wouldn't you? Yeah. It doesn't happen, does it? I always look and I go, Angela, what have you gone and done now? <laughs> yeah. But it's also at that in between, you know, it's sort of like I've done some work on it, but it's nowhere near finished. And it's at that yucky bit where you're thinking, oh, what was I thinking? Shall I just start again? And the answer is no, I'm not going to start again. I'm going to persevere with this. But not now. <laughs> so if you'd like to see the rest of it coloured in, Leave me a comment below and um, I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. So until then, look after yourselves, take care and find time to be creative. Bye bye for now. Bye, Hoyle.